Ladies and gentlemen, we about to talk about the Justice League. I'm about to fan out like a crazy little fanboy. You know, I, I man, I, I'm losing my mind a lot. But first, before I even go there, let me fan out about the original Justice Man who has his own Justice League. I'm talking about the first superhero of all time. I'm talking from Matthew 8, 14, all the way down to 17. It says, when Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lay down and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she arose and ministered unto them. When evening was come, he brought unto him many that were possessed with demons. And he cast out spirits with his word. And he healed all who were ill, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bare our illnesses. I don't got to say nothing more about this superhero. The ultimate superhero. Got that big old S crest on his chest. He the emblem of hope. I call him Jesus the Christ. Yeah, baby. All right, if you're listening carefully in the background, that hype music is actually Hans Zimmer's Man of Steel combined with the Justice League anthem that harks back to Man of Steel. I do believe this orchestration was done by Danny Elfman who embellished what I think is uh, Junkie XL's score. But I do believe Danny Elfin has something to do with that trailer that we saw, the last uh, sneak peek trailer that we saw with Justice League. I think Danny Elfin had something to do with it. And the edit cut seemed like Joss Whedon had something to do with it as well. So, I'm just saying. So it's on continual loop. I'm like a real fanboy right now. I'm gonna really fanboy out. So in front of you, ladies and gentlemen, is the Justice League. First of all, let me just say, never expected to see the Justice League, especially in this kind of monumental, epic way, presented on the screen, thanks to Zack Snyder's vision. We are getting the Justice League. So that is just crazy, just to start with. The second thing that's just really crazy is I just saw the Justice League Kalinda come out. You guys can go pick up one, and you can print it off online. And it's really dope. We have the six Justice League members here, not the seven. And uh, they're repeated twice, each one. And people were talking about Superman. You remember that poster where Superman was striking this pose? Well, here it is on the Justice League calendar here. Aquaman in the pose, Wonder Woman in the pose. We even got Batman in a pose somewhere down here. There he is. See Flash in a the pose. They all have an action pose, and then they have one where they're standing. You know what I'm saying? It's really dope. So, there they all are, man. The members of the Justice League. So you can get your hands on that Kalinda. But you know, you know who my favorite member of the Justice League is, right? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'll explain to you why. Cyborg is my favorite member of the Justice League because he's ever-evolving. In fact, if you've ever read any of the latest issues of Cyborg, whether it's Rebirth or whether it's uh, the New 52, he seems to be discovering more and more abilities that he has, right? And just to just to give you an example of it, you know, he can interact with Boom Tube, so he can go, Cyborg can go anywhere in the universe. Anywhere in the multiverse he can go. Ah, uh, the Flash can also go anywhere in the multiverse, but because he can change timelines. Cyborg can go anywhere in the multiverse because he can he interact with Mother Boxes and YouTube and Boom Tube anywhere. So Cyborg's really exceptionally crazy. I mean, Cyborg, once he has a mother box by him, he's basically indestructible. You can destroy him, but he can reassemble back, and basically, he can just continue on, and he'll be better. He'll be more immune. He's like a Borg. He's immune to that first destruction. So, you know, the Borg life, oh, man, I can't tell you how. Rayfish has got one of the best characters of the Justice League, as far as I'm concerned. A really awesome character in Cyborg. And that is my favorite character. Not only is Ray representing people of color really nicely, 
He's, he's not something to laugh at. He's not a joker. He's not just making jokes. You know, people always think black people are all about jokes and they're athletic and they play sports and stuff. But, you know, you, there are intelligent black people out here, a lot of them. And they're not just monkeys, you know what I'm saying? So I just really love how Ray Fisher is. He's such a he's such a good looking black man too to represent, you know what I'm saying? So I'm really totally liking what I'm seeing. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm just looking forward to Cyborg on the screen. Besides that, if you guys didn't know, Aquaman has had his own movie back in 2007. Wonder Woman has had her own movie. Batman has had his own. <laughs> he has had a series of movies. And The Flash, we've seen him on television. So everybody's seen a version of these characters in live action except for Cyborg, man. He's never had his own show. He's never had his own film. So this is the hour, man, to feature Cyborg. And I love Zack Snyder. I love you, Zack. Because I never thought I'd see the day where these characters would be on the big screen. I never thought so. And in such an epic way, never. Never. Oh, my gosh. Cyborg commandeering the night crawler when Batman can't do it because the night crawler's game burned up and stuff. The cyborg, you know, he he can't die of fire and heat and stuff. He's not human like that. You know, he's that's the question. You know, cyborg is he human? Is he not human? You know, cyborg has to kind of contemplate that issue himself. So it's really really cool. If you've ever read a cyborg comic, you'll realize how cool this character is, not just as a teen titan, but as his own person. It's crazy, man. So I advise people to go check out Cyborg. That is my character for the Justice League. And I'm telling you, man, he a sleeper. He a sleeper. I'm telling you guys, he's a sleeper in this story. You're gonna, you're gonna love him because of the things he can do. Um, but who would ever think that we would see these characters together? I mean, you gotta understand, as a fanboy, I was fanboying so crazy out on the last sneak peek trailer, if you wanna call it a trailer. Because it took it to another level. Even this music is so freaking epic, man. This is so freaking epic. You're listening to music in the background. It's like they amped up Hans Zimmer's uh, Man of Steel run. You know what I'm saying? You will hear Hans Zimmer's Man of Steel again. It's loop. It's on loop, so don't worry. <coughs> well, it's just so crazy, man. It's so freaking crazy. So anyway, thanks to Zack Snyder, we saw... What could happen to the world if Apocalypse took it over and Darkseid's forces took it over? You can see Darkseid's ships in the background. You can see his big ships and stuff. You can see the fire coming out the ground. Here's the Omega symbol. I believe Steppenwolf had something to do with that. And this is the river outside of Batman's apartment. The world has changed so much. You know what I'm saying? So crazy, man. So crazy. <laughs> hear that epic music in the background I know Danny Elfman had something to do with that I could hear his style in there he changed he changed up Hans Zimmer score a little bit and guys one of the things that every DC fanboy went nuts over was when they saw the parademons in that dream oh my gosh you see the parademon right here oh my god you gotta understand man Dude be lo losing it. Nobody ever thought they would see a parademon in any movie. And there they are flying. They're kind of wasp-like creatures created by uh, Kirby. He's the one that did the New Guard section. And you can see the parademon here. And this parademon, look at this thing, was designed by a Greek Frenchman. His name is Patrick Totopoulos. And Patrick Totopoulos, his father was a Macedonian from Greece. That's very important to understand because this is sort of a merger of Greek lore and the new gods are kind of like Greek lore brought to life in an inventive way. <coughs> I understand, all of, all of DC is mostly Greek. They borrow from Greek lore and Christianity and Jewish culture. Superman's kind of like a Moses kind of like a Jesus Christ. The Jews don't like us to acknowledge Jesus Christ in it, but you see Zack Snyder put all the crosses and everything, and you see in DC lore, you see all the crosses and all that stuff, so Zack understands. Um, but yeah, man, and he even took, he even took a, a Jewish lady in Gal Gadot to play Wonder Woman, which was, to me, I don't know, man. Zack is so intuitive. I mean, I don't know if Zack's a Christian. I always keep on telling people, I don't know if Zack's a Christian, but Zack really studies lore, man. He really goes deep into it. I heard some people saying Joss Whedon knows the comics better than Zack Snyder. And I'm like, what? 
Are you crazy? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, Patrick Tatopoulos. So what he is, is a, he's a production designer. And he is designed for the following movies that you may have heard of. Showdown in Little Tokyo with Brandon uh, Lee. Brandon Lee and uh, Dolph London. All right? Bram Stoker's Dracula. The Super Mario Brothers. Stargate. Seven. That was a nice thriller. Horror, thriller uh, uh, crime uh, movie. Independence Day. The first Independence Day with Will Smith. Spawn in 1997, which was a crazy ass movie. And I hear they're going to do a remake of Spawn, and the guy who actually wrote Spawn, the guy who actually created Spawn, he's actually going to be doing that movie, which is going to be crazy. I hear a lot of people saying, oh, he doesn't know how to direct film and stuff. Look, man, this dude has done things that he wasn't supposed to be qualified to do. He made toy lines. He, he made his own comic uh, line, his own comic line. Are you crazy? I don't count this guy out. If he says he's going to do Spawn, the movie, and it's going to be good, I believe him. All right. This guy also he did designs for Stigmata, which was a badass movie. Short level, which was a, a, a which was a, a animation. Supernova, Pitch Black, which is really the first movie of uh, Riddick, The Adventures of Riddick. Battlefield Earth. He did Final Fantasy: The Spirits Within. He did Underworld. Van Helsing, by the way, people say Hugh Jackman before he got the Wolverine role, you know, he was just an ordinary actor. Wrong. He was in Van Helsing. He was in this other movie with John Travolta. He and, and uh, uh, what's her name? Oh shit, I forgot her name. And he's been he's acted in a ton of movies, man. So that's not true. Chronicles of Riddick, I Robot, Alien vs Predator, Underworld Evolution, Aragon. See Aquaman, I told you there was an Aquaman movie in 2007. Live Free or Die Hard, which was a part of the Die Hard series. Resident Evil Extinction, I Am Legend. Uh, Underworld, Rise of the Lycans, 2012. Uh, Total Recall in 2012, it didn't, it didn't do as well as the original Total Recall. <laughs> it wasn't bad, it wasn't bad, I saw it. Riddick in 2013, 300 Rise of the Empire, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, and now Justice League, which is crazy, man, really crazy. So he's has a lot of experience, and he's the one that de designed the Parademons. And let me show you something, guys. Let me show you something for all those fanboys out there. These Parademons, man, these Parademons look, man. Look at this parody. Look at this parody. It looks like these Parademons straight out of the freaking comics, man. They're out of the freaking comics, man. Look at this shit. And they got claws and everything. Alright? We're getting parademons, ladies and gentlemen. And the parademons, when they came to Earth, they killed a whole bunch of people. As you can see here from the comic, this is New 52, where they were just blowing up people. See this person getting blown up? And uh, some people say, oh, you know, and this is the parademons here again in another comic. See them? And just to show you, compare the parademons. Oh shit, and we get parademons in the Justice League. And they're literally flying around like freaking parademons, man. Oh my god. There they are with Batman v Superman. When, when, when I first saw it, I was like, freaking parademons? Man, I lost my mind. I lost my gravy. Look at these freaking parademons, man. Oh my god, Zack Snyder. God bless you, brother. <sighs> I lost it, man. I lost my marbles. And they resemble the Parademons from uh, Justice League War as well. Man, I lost my marbles, y'all. See, Aquaman fighting different, and they're different kinds of Parademons. Aquaman here fighting the Parademons. It seems as though they're going to go into the back entrance here. They're going to enter. You see the Parademons, they shoot. They can shoot weapons and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. And then it's Steppenwolf. We got Steppenwolf, folks. And for those people who didn't know who Steppenwolf was, they're like, oh, <laughs> it's just like Doc says, henchmen like Thanos. No, no fools. No fools. For the real fanboys out there, they know who Steppenwolf is. They know who freaking Steppenwolf is. This is freaking Steppenwolf, okay? Steppenwolf saying Superman is no god. This is freaking Steppenwolf. This is where mankind was fighting back at Steppenwolf in Earth 2. Those of you who know and read the comic Earth 2 from the New 52, y'all know who Steppenwolf is. Let me give y'all a taste of it. As the analyst and the historians will put on record, the world's army invasion of Durain began at 1017. 
My name is Steppenwolf. And here he is. You see all the people attacking Steppenwolf. There's a whole army coming at Steppenwolf here. All right, and he got a battle axe here. It remind me of the uh, in the trailer when all the Earth's forces, all the humans, Atlanteans, and Thamaskirians or Amazonians and, and Thanagarians, they're all attacking Darkseid's forces and freaking Darkseid just drops down the battle axe on the Earth and you just see the whole freaking Earth start to break out into lava, man. Shoot. This is Steppenwolf, y'all. This is Steppenwolf, for those of you who don't know. By a little over 60 minutes later, it was patently clear that the world's army lost. If I have any other names, talents, or traits, I have long forgotten them. And although I recall vaguely the first man I killed, the hundreds of thousands that followed him to the grave are more of a blur. As the great Darkseid's Grand High Marshal for War, I fought for domination and glory of Apocalypse. And now, my fiery world is lost to me. This is him killing just killing thousands and thousands of humans here. Just butchering them. Look at he's just destroying them with his battle axe. Okay. And you think that's all? No. Steppenwolf killed Wonder Woman in Earth 2. He murdered her. Okay. Wonder Woman was no match for Steppenwolf. So that you see that toe-to-toe -to -toe battle that Wonder Woman's having with Steppenwolf? If she tries to pursue Steppenwolf and really try to go at him... He's going to kill her in the end. Because he is versed in war longer than Wonder Woman. And her peoples have been alive. Okay? Just for you guys to get an idea of what the heck the Justice League is going up against. Okay? And that's just Steppenwolf. We're not talking about all his forces. We're not talking about all the different parademons. Here the parademons surround Superman. And they're zapping him up. And he yells out, Diana! Steppenwolf, you... I'll kill you. That's what he was trying to say. And then he blows up into a million pieces. And Steppenwolf says, No, Cal, you won't. This is after he kills Wonder Woman. Okay, okay. Uh oh, you think it's just Wonder Woman? Oh, Green Lantern comes at him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Green Lantern comes at Steppenwolf. Look at him there. Punching Steppenwolf in the face. You know what I'm saying? Green Lantern coming at Steppenwolf. You know what I'm saying? And this is what it said here. Let me, let, me, let me zoom in here. I saw heroic greatness and sad, savage fury. This is, he's talking about uh, Green Lantern going at him, beating the crap out of him at first, until I saw it travail. This here is a clone of Superman that Darkseid cloned. And this clone of Superman kills Green Lantern. Okay? And I saw it falter. Burn him straight through his back. Killed him. Alright? And this is part of Steppenwolf's uh, forces. I think he's called Blunt or Blunderer. I think he's called. I can't remember what his name is. Alright? So if y'all think... If y'all think... And I don't know if we'll see him in uh, here. And he may be the Superman that we see, actually. That Alfred might be talking to. Because he's a clone of Superman, and he's he also has a red cape, but he's got this black clothing, black and red clothing, you know. This is what you're going to see, ladies and gentlemen. You're seeing the landing of Steppenwolf through a boom tube. We've never seen a boom tube in our lives. And now in live action, we see a freaking boom tube. We see a mother box open a boom tube. We don't know if Steppenwolf contacted the mother box, threw another mother box from Apocalypse, and comes straight down to Earth that way. I heard a lot of people who are clueless saying, oh, you know, didn't, Air, uh, didn't uh, Zeus hide the Amazons? And look how easy Steppenwolf found them. And I'm like, dang, man, you mothers, you just don't know nothing about DC lore, do you? Clearly, they had a model box. They thought it was safe. Apparently, Steppenwolf was timing everything at that point in time. We don't know if it's way back in history when they had the first war. Or we don't know if it's present time, him re <coughs> returning to Earth. But clearly, these Amazons are no match for Steppenwolf. Okay, for those of you who don't know, they're no match for Steppenwolf, okay? Steppenwolf will kill every last one of them, alright? 
They're versed in battle, but not like him, okay? He don't... Steppenwolf does not need to have an army to take out the entire Amazons of Thymoscure. They will have to flee. And maybe that's what they did the first time, I don't know. This is Steppenwolf here when he's terraforming the Earth, and you can see the huge battleships in the background behind him. These remind me of the battleships we saw when Batman... When Batman was uh, here, these huge freaking battleships. Well, this is the same thing you're seeing right here. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So that's really crazy, man. Shit, I never thought I'd see the day. And there's this battle axe. Oh my gosh. He's about to smite the earth, and it's about to turn into freaking lava. God, here he is in this underground, it looks like an underground cavern, but it may not be, these look like, like pillars or something, I don't know if it's the base of the tower, the building, <clears throat> underground, and they built on it, or if this is inside of their ship, I don't think it's inside of their ship, uh, I think this is underground in the earth, but there's this huge spherical ship that looks kind of like Apocalypse, but it's not Apocalypse, I don't think it's Apocalypse, I just think it's a ship. And I think they need the boom, they need the mother boxes to boom tune their forces to Earth to take it over. <coughs> That's, I think, what they're about to do. So, um, but why would they want to take over Earth? That's the big question, right? So, <coughs> we'll find out that. But if you've ever read the comics on, uh, if you read George Perez run with the New Gods, where uh, Darkseid was also looking on, and then he saw where Superman and Wonder Woman and they were occupied fighting, uh, I believe it was Ares and some other people. I think, no, it was where the gods were clashing with one another. I think it was Neptune and his forces, the old gods, uh, fighting with uh, Zeus and they. While they were busy fighting, I think Darkseid, <coughs> he saw an opportunity to come in and attack Earth, and then he changed his mind. I think that's what's happening in this universe. So, Darkseid saw an opportunity to attack, or Steppenwolf, and he attacked once before, and I guess he's going to attack again. So, this forces the age of heroes. Here's Darkseid looking up. You can see this is, uh, as you can see, this is the underground tower. That's the thing that blew up. And you can see him looking up into it, and you see the red sky. I don't, <coughs> I'm not quite sure how they make the red sky. But once again, as a fanboy in me, I can't believe I'm seeing this stuff. And then how epic the music sounds. You know, Danny Elfman has an uncanny knack of being able to do fantastic things. Now finally, on the uh, Barbie docks box, we see another picture of Mira here. It looks outstanding. Outstanding right here. And her costuming really kind of resembles the costume, costuming of the Barbie doll. Of course, the Barbie doll is much more brighter. But they get it a little bit better, even though I still think that this uh, design here is more green than gold. Uh, they sort of get the color coordination much better than the other uh, iterations of Mira we saw with Mattel. And this looks pretty good. This looks pretty dope for a doll. Yeah. That's Mira, baby. And she'll be up in there as well. And we know Ocean Master will be in there for some reason. I'm not too sure why, but he'll be up in there too. So their Barbie doll is actually better and more accurate than their Mattel action figure. You know? I'm just going to let you guys take in this music right now. You guys have a great one.